Happy Friday, everybody. I am back with another installation of your first chapter Friday with another Mark Twain nominated book for the 2023-2024 school year. Um, today I'm coming at you with a different type of story. It's definitely different from any of the other Mark Twain nominated books this year. This one is called Once Upon a Camel. And it's a really interesting story. So basically, um, there are these two birds and they are traveling across the de desert on this camel. And this camel is telling them all um, different like stories that have happened to it. So it's just a really interesting. Um, I guess you would call it fantasy because it's... Um, because it has camels and birds that are talking to each other and communicating. But I also think that it could be kind of a realistic fiction. You're learning about camels, you learn a lot about animals. It's a really interesting, really great story and I highly suggest you give it a try even though it's different. Here's a little bit of the inside and then of course the first chapter. Zada is an achy old camel with a treasure trove of stories to tell. She's won camel races for the ruling Pasha of Smyrna crossed treacherous, treacherous oceans to new lands, led army missions with her best camel friend by her side, and outsmarted a far too pompous mountain lion. But they, these stories were before. Now Zada wanders the desert as the last camel in Texas. But she's not alone. Two tiny kestrel chicks nestled in the fluff of fur between her ears, key killy keen for their missing parents, and a dust storm the size of a mountain are taking Zada on one more grand adventure, and it could lead to Zada's most brilliant story yet. Something I do like about this story is it it um, it gives you like the time um, time in history that this is happening. Um, it also tells you, it shows you a little bit, some pictures that are happening in the story. So you get, um, so it keeps you entertained. It keeps you with it. The chapters are relatively short. They're only three or four pages and the words are a little bit in a little bit of larger print. So it's just like a really nice story to keep you engaged to kind of breeze through. Okay. This is happening chapter one in the foothills of Chisos Mountains in West Texas in 1910. Incoming! Even in her sleep, Zada recognized that voice. The old camel raised one eyelid. It was still dark. There was at least an hour left before dawn. She did not recall setting an early alarm bird. Zada settled deeper into her sandy furrow, yawned. But before she could drift back off, here it came a high-speed bundle of flapping kestrel feathers. American kestrel, to be specific, smallest of the falcon family, and it barreled directly sorry, towards Zada's face. Peck, 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 peck. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Zada, wake up. Perlita, in a pecking frenzy. Ouch, 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 ouch. More ouch. Any chance for more sleep was now fully dashed. Zada, Perlita said, it's the worst news. Perlita did a hoppity hoppity dance on Zada's nose. Then she fluffed herself up so anxious she could hardly contain herself. Zada waited, Perlita puffed. Long pause, more puffing. Long pause number two, puff, puff, puff. Long pause number 5,863, extreme puffing. Finally, Zada couldn't stand it. Chirp it out, she said. At least Perlita, still maximally puffed, cut loose with a dizzying trail of words that quickly turned into a torrent, which she strung together into an, an array of cleas and killies. As best Zada could make out, Perlita's monologue went something like this. So she was like chirpy and making lots of bird noises. And in between, the camel was only getting a few words. And here's what the camel came up with. There's a mountain coming towards us. A huge, huge mountain. The tallest in history. And it's so big and so tall. It's taking up the entire world, the entire universe. 
and it's moving our way. Perlita's voice had gone so fevered that it made Zara wince, even without the message that was attached to it. And the message was, it's going to eat us, Zara. I'm telling you, there's a mountain coming our way. It's sucking everything into its big, 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 big behemoth belly. Zara looked around. It was still dark, but she could tell by the thin rays of the dawn's early light that the Chisos Mountain sat squarely in the same place they had always sat. She could see their peaks right where they should be, just below the stars. I don't see anything, said Zara, trying to fathom what on earth had ruffled Perlita's feathers. I can't see it from here, said Perlita, her distress growing by the second. It's coming across the canyon. The canyon, as Zara, from their vantage point near the creek, the canyon was hidden behind a set of ridges and a wide plateau. Ordinarily, Zara avoided the canyon. When she stood at the top of it and stared down at its steep, jagged walls, it made her dizzy. Standing at the bottom of it and looking up at its steep, jagged walls, she got woozy. Of course, a canyon is not a problem for a kestrel. Perlita flew over it all the time, which was how she had spotted the moving mountain, which she was sure was going to eat them, which made her peck, 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 peck. Ouch! Zada wrinkled her nose. Oh, sorry, said Perlita, catching herself mid-frenzy. A tuft of camel fur was caught on the side of her beak. She flapped into the air and zip! She buzzed again, first one way, then the other, and then she shot straight up, banked and made a death-defying midair U-turn, zip! She buzzed back the other way and paused in front of Zada's face, only long enough to say, the mountain, it's eating everything, even the stars. But Perlita, sorry, but Perlita, Zada tried to follow her flight when zing, a second blurry object flew by her face. Pard, Perlita's one and only love. He zoomed by so fast he made the stars blink. Then he circled back and landed right between the camel's eyes. Zada, he exclaimed. There's a mountain and it's going to eat us. Okay, that's the end of chapter one. I'm going to give you a little tiny bit of a spoiler. It is a dust storm, a very large, crazy dust storm, which I'll go into more details about, but somebody has to save the birds and Zada might be up for the job. You'll have to see what Zada thinks and what uh, happens on this crazy adventure. It is an easy breezy book that I think all of you are really going to enjoy and I would love discussing with you. So please come check it out and talk to me about Once Upon a Camel. Have a great Friday. Bye everybody.